Hi, and welcome to this unit on reaction kinetics. We're going to start off by taking a look at uh, measuring rates of reaction. The ideal method to define the rate of a reaction is a change in product concentration with respect to time. One can also measure it by the negative of the change in the reactant concentration with respect to time. Let's look at an example of this using this particular reaction I have here. I have here graphed the concentration of the reactant, so that would be this chemical with respect to time. I can tell because it's being reduced or used up. There are several different types of rate, an average rate and an instantaneous rate. Let's look at the difference between those. The average rate we define as the rate between two points in time. In my example here, I want to look at the average rate between 0 and 400 seconds. So to do that, what I'm going to try to do is really find what's the slope of the line from that concentration point there to the 400 second mark, which would be roughly that point right there. So let's put in the numbers to do that. I'll use R here to represent the rate. So it's the change in the reactant concentration, so the negative of it. The change would be my initial concentration minus my final, uh, my final concentration minus my initial. So my final time here, I'm about uh, 0 0.08 um, moles per liter or moles per decimeter cubed minus my initial, which is about uh, 0 0.36. And I'll just put the units outside here. That's moles per decimeter cubed. And on the bottom, my change in time from 0 to 400 seconds, which would be uh, 1400 seconds, which would be 1400 seconds. So putting that through the, the calculator, I'll end up with a positive rate because of the two negative signs that I have there. And 0 0.00020 moles per decimeter cubed per second. Again, emphasizing, we end up with a positive rate. Whether we use this expression or this expression, the rate is usually expressed as a positive quantity. So that represents an average rate between these two points in time. In my second example, I want to look at the calculation of the rate at one point in time. They call this an instantaneous rate of reaction. In this particular example, I would like to know what the rate of the reaction is exactly at that point right there. To do that, I need to draw a tangent at that point. I think I have something close to a tangent here. It's a line that just touches at that point. And so what I'm going to try to do now is find what the slope is of that line by using this point and this point. So, my instantaneous rate of reaction then, again the negative, my final concentration down here is zero. The initial concentration is about 0 0.3. And again, that's moles per decimeter cubed. And the run on the bottom, my time, is about 850 seconds. Giving me an instantaneous rate of reaction, again, that's positive, point zero 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 three five moles per decimeter cubed per second. The use of concentration is an ideal method to determine the rate of the reaction, and that's why we use square brackets, because they indicate the use of concentration. We can measure the rate of reaction in other techniques by measuring variables other than concentration. Here are some examples of other variables that we could measure. You could measure mass. <clears throat> so you place your reaction into a container and place that on a balance, and if the reaction produces bubbles of gas, that gas will escape from the system and you'll slowly get changes in mass over time. 
An example of that might be uh, this reaction. If we take hydrochloric acid, put in some pieces of calcium carbonate, which is a solid, that would react producing carbon dioxide gas that would escape, H2O liquid that would remain behind, as well as calcium chloride, which would dissolve then in the water. So this particular substance escaping will cause a change in mass. Pretty much any gas will cause a change in mass, but avoid measuring things like hydrogen because the weight of that gas is so small, we would get very small changes. So it's good if you have a gas that has a noticeable change in mass. Another technique that you could use to measure this reaction here would be to place the calcium carbonate solid down below in here, and the bubbles of gas would then move up through here, through the gas tube, and then into my graduated cylinder, and then collect in this chamber up here. This gives us measurements of volume of gas with respect to time. It's a good idea when using this technique to make sure that your gas isn't too soluble in the liquid that you're bubbling it through. One could also measure changes in pH. pH gives you a measure, in particular, of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we can measure changes in the hydrogen ion concentration with respect to time. Other methods could involve changes in conductivity. That method works particularly well when you have changes in the number of ions on both sides of the equation. So perhaps one side that has no ions and another side that has lots of ions. And the last method that you could perhaps use is colorimetry, where you get a particular color change in a substance and you can measure that with a spectrometer. The last uh, group of methods to measure rates of reaction I'm going to mention are called timed events. Perhaps you're going to time how long it takes to collect 10 cubic centimeters of gas. And for my example, let's say that that takes uh, 20 seconds. We would then define the rate of the reaction as 1 over the time to get to that event, which in this case would be 1 over 20. The units then for my answer would simply be 0.05 seconds to the minus one. Now other things you could possibly use for a timed event, perhaps there's a marked change in the solution color. Many of you might have done the iodine clock reactions and you'll see the sudden change to a blue color. You might time it, measure the time it takes for a particular solid to disappear. It's up to you to define what you want that timed event to be. Anyway, let this serve as an introduction to various techniques we can use to measure rates of reaction. In our next program, we'll take a look at the collision theory.